YouTube fan community, Rolling Stones fans, random people on the internet, my name is Giggins, and we are here today to talk about the brand new Rolling Stones album, Hackney Diamonds. Never in my life did I think while doing this channel, I'd get to review a brand new Rolling Stones album, but here we are. 2023 has been a year full of surprises. The Zombies have a new album out. Ringo's got a new EP out. The Circle have a new song out. The Rolling Stones are back with a new album. And this is their first full length since the passing of Charlie Watts, the drummer who's been there basically since day one, almost since day one. Let's, all right, if you're being critical about this, but let's just admit it. Charlie is the drummer of the Rolling Stones. Um, this album is absolutely the shot in the arm that they need. <laughs> What's cool about this too is Mick was like, look, we got to set ourselves a deadline because they've gone to the studio many times over the last 18 years to kind of fool around, put ideas down, see where things can go. And things don't really ever go anywhere because they just kind of like, mm, I'll go, we'll finish that off later or whatever. That later is now. Basically, Mick told the guys, he was like, look, here's the deadline. We're getting the entire album done by this date. And that's it. And a lot of bands work better that way. When you have a deadline to set for yourself, you have a, a, an objective, a goal in mind, and basically your homework assignment is due and you don't want it to be late. Because when bands are in the studio for too long, it can just, it just sometimes doesn't sound that great. It sounds like meandering or it sounds like they're tired. When you have a deadline to meet, the hunger is there, the drive is there, the search is there, and they nailed it. This album is an absolute classic Stones album. It's the best thing they've done in years, obviously. All right, let me, let me rephrase that. The best thing they've done probably since the early 90s. Definitely since Some Girls. I mean, Tattoo You was great. But, like, this album is something they absolutely should be proud of. It's, it's wonderful from start to finish. It's full of catchy hooks, great lyrics, stuff you want to sing along to. It rocks, it rolls. It's the Rolling Stones. It's only rock and roll, but we like it. The first song, Angry, is also the first single from this record. And the second it came out, I was like, oh, we're in for something special with this thing. The, vi this, the song itself is so rocking. It starts off with Steve Jordan pounding away, doing a Charlie-ish drum beat. And then those classic guitar riffs come in. And then Mick comes in doing his Mick thing. And it's just, you're in for the ride. The chorus is instantly an earworm. You just want to sing along with it. That rhythm makes you bob your head the whole time. But by the time the song ends, you have this gang vocal chanting of the chorus, don't get, don't be angry with me, over and over and over again, and Mick screaming on top of it. And you're like, oh my God, this is the Rolling Stones. These dudes are 80 and they sound amazing. It's something incredible about rock and roll. It keeps you young. It really does. Um, I absolutely adore this song. It rocks, it rolls, it's perfect. It's the Rolling Stones. I think it Get Close, and man, this is such a good song. I really love the warm guitars on this one. The overall caring vibe of it. Um, this track is just warm. You know, it's just a welcoming song. The whole production, they nail it. And the Bobby Keys inspired sax solo is perfection. That rolling bass, the wonderful chorus, that descending chorus. I'm a sucker for those descending lines. I just want to get close to you. Oh my God, so good. It stays in your head. Perfect. And then the one, two, three punch of Depending on You. Love that early 70s feel. Depending on You feels like it could have come off of Tattoo You. Um, or maybe even like Goat's Head Soup, Exile kind of stones. It's a classic. It instantly stays in your head. That blend of guitars with Mick sort of lilting his voice on top of it all. It's incredible. It's one of those tracks you hear and you're like, oh my God, they did it again. Like they just know how to write classics. This is one of them. I think it bite my head off featuring Paul McCartney. It only took 60 years, but there's a Beatle on a Rolling Stones album. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Paul plays fuzz bass on this thing. This is just a fast-paced, charged-up rocker. They drop the F-bomb numerous times. They're just having the time of their lives jamming with Paul, and they sound awesome. Again, for guys at 80 years old, you would have think a bunch of kids in their 20s pulled this thing off. It rocks. Great to hear Paul on this thing, too. Whole Wide World. This song is definitely another um, left turn, I would say. It's got like an overall weariness to it, but it allows the choruses to be a little more optimistic i guess because the song itself is about just kind of getting like you feel like the whole wide world's against you and you know 
the chorus is almost like a bit of a hug where it's got this warmer feel to it but um you know it's a cheer you on type of song and I, I dig it a lot great track and then dreamy skies ends off side one and they these guys are just masters at country blues and they just know what they're doing this thing rules um they deliver can't go wrong excellent to hear mick on this thing it's just the whole bluesy vibe it's perfect Side two opens up with two songs featuring Charlie Watts on drums, and I'm so thrilled he's on this album. You know, it's just, it wouldn't be a Stones album without Charlie, so he's on Mess It Up here. And this song is really decent, you know, it's definitely one of the poppier songs on the album. The chorus itself is super poppy, but it works. It's a song about keeping things together when things might not be feeling together. And then Live By The Sword reunites Bill Wyman with Charlie, Ronnie, uh mick and keith so you get the uh the stones that existed from 74 75 to about 1993 92 and it's really great hearing that version of the group together again it's like it instantly sounds like them the rest of the album sounds like them too even though bill and charlie aren't on it it still sounds like the stones it's a pretty incredible feat in terms of what the other guys who play on this thing can do especially steve jordan on drums he doesn't have the exact same swing that charlie does but he really is a master at getting very very close and giving the stones that feel because the stones are all about the drums the guitars of course but without charlie underneath it all you don't have a stone song fight me in the comments <laughs> but live by the sword it's a decent song it definitely rocks its way through um not my favorite on the bunch but still for historicalness the historicalness of it it's it's an incredible song just for that Tell Me Straight, Keith sings lead on this one. A little bit of a darker song. Um, it's not bad, you know, for the, the emotional roller coaster you go through on this album. It's kind of nice to have a moment like that where it's a little bit calmer because what comes next is nothing short of a masterpiece from the Rolling Stones, Sweet Sounds of Heaven. Absolutely one of the best songs they have ever done. Lady Gaga on this thing is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. And Stevie Wonder on piano. I mean, like, the list on this album of celebrities is incredible. Elton John's also on this thing, by the way. Not in this song, but he's on the, on the album. Um, Sweet Sounds of Heaven is a song that grows and takes its time. On the, on the album, you get the longer version. They also put out a single version as well, which kind of puts Lady Gaga further up in the mix um, in the beginning of the song for the first chorus. But this track, it shines... It takes its time, it grows, and it just delivers over and over and over again. It's one of the most rewarding experiences as a Stones fan I could think of, where it just it just hits all the right marks. You want it to grow, you want the big bright horns, you want Lady Gaga screaming away, you want Mick screaming away, you want them going back and forth, call and response, it's all there. I mean, they just nail it. And the album ends with Rolling Stone Blues. A song that they got their name from, the old Muddy Waters track, and they finally did it. It took them 60 odd years, but they finally put this song on one of their albums, and it's great. You know, the harmonica, the guitar playing, the almost raw production to it lends itself to the old school blues feeling. And it's a perfect closer. This album is something special, and as I'm making this video, word just came out about an hour ago that this thing has debuted at number three on the Billboard Top 200. Um, just behind Drake, and at number one is Blink-182, so with their new record. And it is incredible that the Rolling Stones are in the top five. Top three. They're in the top three with a brand new album in 2023. Who would have thunk, if you've been a fan for all these years, that we could say something like that? And it's absolutely well deserved. This is one of their best albums. It's catchy. It's fun. It's 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 poppy in the right moments. It's exactly what I would have wanted from a Rolling Stones album in 2023. I want something that's rocking, fun to sing along with, endearing, it reflects on their past, but also looks very forward. Nothing about it sounds like they're resting on their laurels. Nothing sounds like they just want to be a version of the Rolling Stones. They're just making music in 2023. And if it sounds like some of the older stuff, great. If it sounds like something totally new, even better. They nailed it. They really nailed it. So for me, this is easily a 9 out of 10. It's one of the best Stones albums. And it could just be a little bit of the newness to it. Like, oh, new Stones album. I'm super excited about it. But I guarantee 
a year from now, I'll still feel the same way because I've been playing this thing nonstop. And for a lot of new albums, I get maybe a couple of listens and I kind of forget about it. But this thing has been in constant rotation since it came out. So that's a good feeling. It's a good sign. Um, here's the inside. One thing I will, I guess, um, give a, a critique to is that I really wish there was a picture of the Rolling Stones on here somewhere. <laughs> like, just, just one single picture. This happens to be their well, website exclusive. So it's a really nice light blue, see-through blue vinyl. Looks so cool. And this cover is also the website exclusive as well, where this is the, um, more of the tongues. The more common one is the, like, the heart getting stabbed. But, you know, for guys who are 80 years old, and I, I don't mean to keep bringing that up, but... A lot of people get into their 40s or 50s or 60s as musicians and kind of stop and just rely on what they did in their 20s and 30s. They don't. The Rolling Stones understand the, their legacy. They understand what people have come for. And they understand that future generations will look back on their late period albums and be just as impressed as they were with Sticky Fingers or Becker's Banquet. You know, they understand what's going on. And they're doing things right. Absolutely. So the Rolling Stones, thank you for making this album. If you happen to watch this, thank you for all the music for all the years. Thanks for making one of your best albums. 9 out of 10. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. My name is Giggins. It's been an absolute honor to review a brand new Rolling Stones album. Um, and I'll see you guys in the comments. And see you guys in the next video. Take care of yourselves.